Welcome to the one o'clock news on channel FNL coming to you live from Lake Massachusetts. Uh, FNL is to Nature Link, a nonprofit out here in Lincoln where we enhance the lives of children from families of low income uh, families. No connection with the natural world. Today, our top story will be talking about birds. But first, some news. Let's check the weather. Very good. Okay, let's um, let's see what else. Let's uh, from experts in the field. Wash your hands. Very good advice. All right, and uh, and now our top story: birds. What are they? Where did they come from? So many questions. <gasps> I think I see a bird now. <laughs> Mr. Robin, please come back. I have Excuse me? Excuse me. Hello, Mr. Robin. It's too quick. We, uh, I think we need an, uh, I think we need an animal expert. Where did they come from? From Farrington is available. Let's inside and see if we can find uh, an animal expert. Uh, okay, we'll be right back. Hello, everybody. My name is Meg. And I work here at Farrington Nature Link here in Lincoln, Mass. Um, I hear that uh, news reporter Jem Odie was trying to talk to some birds today, uh, not having much luck. But good news. Hello, everybody. This is Ori the Oriole, for those of you who are unfamiliar. Oh, many different special. Uh, going to learn a little bit more about that today. We're going to do a fun craft activity and uh, I'll tell you some fun bird jokes maybe along the way. Uh, so Ori is a Baltimore Oriole. Uh, there are some Baltimore Orioles flying around here in Massachusetts. There'll be a question for you. Shoot. Ori, what is the state bird of Massachusetts. Is it the turkey? Ooh, a good guess. There are a lot of wild turkeys here in Massachusetts, but actually the state bird is called a black-capped chickadee. Wow, that sounds like a really fun bird. Why is it called a, a chickadee? I'm glad you asked, Ori. Black-capped chickadees, like the name suggests, have black feathers, just like how you have black feathers on the top of your head. And they're called chickadees because of the sound of the song that they sing. They go chickadee, chickadee dee dee. It's very pretty to hear. That sounds great. Ori, I was wondering, could you tell the viewers some fun facts about birds? I know you have many special talents. Okay, I can sing. A la 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 la. Very nice, Ori. What other special talents do you have? Oh, I'm great at dancing. That is amazing, Ori. I didn't know you could dance like that. Are there any other special skills that you have? Oh, I can fly. That is phenomenal. So cool. I wish I could fly. You should make some bird wings. Bird wings, that's a great idea. Thanks, Ori. We'll check in with you later. Bird wings, what a great idea. Why did I think of that? Birds have these wings on the sides of them. And typically, most birds have 10 different flight feathers on each wing. And those are special feathers that help them fly. Underneath those 10 flight feathers are a whole bunch of other feathers, uh, secondary feathers. Depending on what type of bird they are, 
they'll have just a few and some of them have lots. And those bird wings are gonna help propel them up into the air and help them fly and soar across the world. Ooh. Okay, time for a quick bird joke. What kind of movies do ducks like to watch? You can shoot us a, a chat if you know the answer. Leave us a comment. Time's up. They like to watch documentaries. <laughs> That's a good one. Great, let's get to our activity today. So we'll be making some bird wings and I brought a whole bunch of different materials. I'm gonna start by making the base of our bird wing out of cardboard and we're gonna put little handles on it so that we can fit them onto our arms. If you don't have cardboard lying around, you can use a paper bag, any kind of sturdy material, a magazine even. And if you don't have big enough pieces, you can always tape them together or make a little set of wings for your favorite stuffed animal. Uh, you can even try to put them on your cat, but my cats did not like the wings idea. They were very mad at me. Let's get started. Okay, so I'm gonna get my cardboard wings. I brought some examples of uh, the wings that we made last time. So these, these are from, these are from a, a cardboard box that my, my rabbit food came. <laughs> So I cut these shapes so they're sort of straight on one end and they, they curve like this. Um, I'm actually gonna turn over because this will be the part that we decorate. I'm gonna turn them over this way and we're gonna put the handles on each one. So I like using duct tape and it's, uh, it's fitting because we're talking birds, right? So I'm gonna take a nice big, piece of this duct tape here. I'm gonna make a, a loop. So I'm sticking two of the ends together and then I'm sticking part of this onto the, to the back of the cardboard. And then, so this part is still sticky. So we're gonna cover that part so it doesn't get dirt and fabric and things attached to it. Now I'm taking another piece of this duct tape. Uh, ooh, I'm gonna stick it on top like that. And then these ends, I'm gonna press down. So now this part is not sticky and the inside part is not sticky, but I could fit, in theory, my arm through. And you could always adjust these to fit your own arms or cats if you are putting it on your cat. Okay, we're gonna make another loop. I find you can have one loop. I find having two loops, it's a little bit sturdier. So we'll make another loop here. And we'll just do the same thing. So I'm taking some duct tape and putting the sticky side on this sticky part here. Boop, just like that. And then just press that down. Maybe we can go this way, actually. So then, oh no, this you can put your arm through and you have a little handle for your wing. Mm. Pretty cool. Mm -hmm. All right, so we'll do the same thing on the other side real quick and then we'll get to the fun part, decorating. And or comments about birds, or even making crafts. I'm here, I'm here to answer them. There are some birds I saw as I drove in today with red bellies called robins, and they're a sign of spring. So it made me really happy to see those birds out and about. And birds' feathers, usually waterproof. So you might see duck or swans in a pond and they, the way that they clean their feathers is they scoop up some water and they scoop it out of their feathers and then they use their, their bill to clean themselves. Because ducks don't have bathtubs, do they? I, 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 I've never met a duck that has a bathtub. <laughs> I've seen a duck. 
Oh, I've also seen a duck playing the drum with his feet pretty silly. <laughs> All right, we got our handles. Excellent. We're going to turn these back over. And now's the fun part. We get to decorate them. So you can use whatever kind of materials you have at home. Um, I brought a little bit of everything just to show you some different techniques. Um, sometimes I like drawing some, some different designs. So maybe you want to draw um, with a marker that works. So not that one. Maybe a different um, making some like feather patterns, right? Maybe you want to draw those 10 flight feathers that are on most birds. Maybe you just want to draw a smiley face or maybe a little heart or, um, you know, like a little ooh, drawing upside down is tricky. A pine tree or just some like cool designs like this um, and then you can use actual materials so these this is a palm frond that I found out walking near my house in Saugus and then I brought this is a branch of juniper and there's a little juniper berry on that one and these are a type of dried reed or dried grass that I thought they reminded me of feathers, so I brought that one too. But you can also use, um, let's see, I have this is this is a, an old feather boa that I brought. I was a uh, how was I? Oh, I was a dust bunny, so I dressed up as a rabbit, and then I put these gray feathers all over me to look like I was dusty. Pretty silly. And then I have some of these feathers too. So these I just got at a craft store. Right? You don't usually see birds that have like bright green or bright red, unless maybe parrots or uh, I don't know, other birds you might find in tropical locations. Great, so got a whole bunch of materials and now we're gonna decorate. So I'm just using some school glue and we're just gonna Put some down on the cardboard and press down our natural materials here. Ooh, this juniper is going to need a lot of glue I think, to stay. So we might use some other lightweight materials. Things like rocks probably won't stick very well. Uh, like action figures probably not going to stick too well. Maybe flower petals, maybe dried grass. I have a little bit of construction paper here that I'd like to use. So I put a little, a little bit of flare, a little bit of color on those bird wings. So, and then we can go over here and use some of these feathers. I wonder what kind of animal these feathers came from. Don't they? And they feel really soft. Feathers are lightweight and bird bones are hollow. And that's going to help them be able to stay up in the air. Because if they had really heavy bones, it'd be a lot harder for them to fly. What about humans, do you know? Do we have hollow bones? No, we got stuff in our bones, which is super helpful. Things like bone marrow help keep us healthy and safe. Oh yeah, oh yeah, that looks beautiful. Here, maybe we'll put one of these bright yellow feathers on. Sure, you got a lot of glue. Ooh, this is coming along nicely. And a good thing about this glue, though, is that if you get some on you, it washes off very easily. You should be washing your hands up here. Very good. All right, we'll put some more of these feathers on. 
So cool. I don't know. Do you know any other fun facts about birds? Have you seen birds around your neighborhood recently? Are owls types of birds? They are. They are indeed. And we have owls here in Massachusetts. In fact, Chris was talking about this morning at the Codman estate that he had seen owls. It's hard. They don't make a lot of noise. And that's all when they're trying to hunt for smaller prey. Um, hey, Meg, it's really Sarah. Big. I have a question. Hey, Sarah. Yeah. Do you think that the birds, especially the owls, are happier since humans aren't going outside as much these days? I do. Well, I don't know if they're happy that there have been a lot more bird sightings and animal sightings in general since this whole pandemic started and uh, Yosemite there have been a lot more um, sightings of uh, foxes which is really neat deer things like that uh, I actually I had three coyotes on my street the other day here in Saugus it was a good thing Eleanor Rabbit wasn't hopping about because she would have been lunch for sure um, but yeah I think the streets are a lot quieter I think um, there's a lot more green space that there are, are fewer people out and about making noise. Um, so I think that there are a lot more birds and things out nowadays. What about at your house? Have you heard any birds? <laughs> Some birds, they, do, you know, do you know where they live? They live in nests. And that's where, depending on the type of bird, um, they'll have different kind of nests. So some nests look just like kind of like a bowl full of little sticks and twigs and things where they put the eggs and they sit on the eggs. Um, some birds nest, it looks like a little cocoon sort of. So it goes up and around them and there's a little hole that they can poke their head out. Some birds like to live right in a tree. They'll make a nest inside a tree, so it's nice and protected. Um, what else? Swans make really big nests at the banks of a river, something like that. Um, yeah, all kinds of birds. What about seagulls? Don't, I mean, there are some seagulls around here. They're usually um, closer to the ocean. Um, but there are some seagulls around Massachusetts. Do you have a favorite bird or a bird that I really like the male cardinals because they're bright red and they can be a, a little annoying, a little aggressive sometimes, um, but their bright blue color makes me really happy. And seeing robins first thing in the spring makes me makes me pretty happy too. Will, do you have a favorite? Favorite bird. Favorite bird. Oh, um, I know it's hard to pick just one. Hard to pick. Uh, one of my favorites is the red-winged blackbird. A red-winged blackbird. Yeah, and you see those all the time by bodies of water. By water, yeah. And especially this time of year, you can find them probably all over the greater Boston area. A red winged blackbird. It's an interesting name because it's a blackbird, but it's got with red wings. It's got like a stripe of that red orange color on their wings. What about a bird that likes to knock on wood? Do you know what kind of bird that would be called? Chris was talking about them earlier today. Maybe a it is a woodpecker. Very good, Will. And woodpeckers, do you know what they're doing? They're pecking at that wood. They're not just making noise to make noise. And maybe, maybe they're having a little woodpecker band or something. Usually, when they're pecking at the wood when the, uh, on a tree like that, they're looking for something inside of the tree. What are they looking for? Bugs. That's right. They're knocking on the wood to see which part is hollow, where the little grubs 
have decided to build a little grub nest inside of those trees. Well, we're just finishing up decorating our, our wings here. I might give these how I do. Now these are just pretend wings, so these are not going to hold up a human if you try to fly in them. So these are just running around pretending you're a bird. So don't go jumping off things thinking that you can fly. Because humans, we can only fly in like an airplane. We, we, we need very much mechanical wings. And birds do. I think I'll put a little bit of tape on that juniper. So if you have some bigger, some bigger items, you might just want to add a little bit of tape, a little extra. Now let to ensure that all your natural materials can stay on. Any other questions before we test these out? Put them on and go outside. Any other? There are, there are other birds that have songs, like their names. So a whippoorwill, one of the songs that they sing is a whippoorwill, whippoorwill. I know they're not calling for you, Will. They're, that's just the song that they're singing. Um, maybe sometimes, maybe you have a pet whippoorwill that you can befriend and know. Um, any other questions before we go outside? Meg, I have a question. Uh, yes, Will. What do birds eat? What do birds eat, Will? Great question. Depends on the bird. Eat worms and grubs, a variety of seeds. Uh, my friend Ori really likes um, oranges. Um, if you put like grape jelly in a little dish in your backyard, uh, not cardinals, Orioles. Uh, a little bit of grape jelly, seeds, berries, things like that. Um, if you're talking like really big birds, like a grape, I saw a great blue heron eat out in the pond, being really stealth and quiet, and then he ducked in the pond really quick and he came up. Crazy. Sarah, you had a question? I do have a question. I heard that bird bird bones are hollow and that helps them fly. Is that true or is that a myth? That's fair. No myths here. Bird bones indeed are hollow and that helps them be lightweight so that it's easier for them to fly. Great question. Okay, quick bird joke for you. Why did the bird go to the library? Because he was looking for bookworms. <laughs> what, you want another one? Okay, okay. Why did the owl get invited to the party? Because he was a hoot. All right, let's go outside and test these wings. I'm excited. I'm pretty excited. Oh, I bet I have a hard time opening doors. Come, come and follow. Oh, it's beautiful. It's still raining. Check me out! And uh, have a great day. Stay safe out there. Natural things. Bye-bye.